Okay, hello, and this is going to be my extremely short review of Oddity because I was finally able to see it in the theater. For some reason, some movies just do not come to Canada at all, so I had to see it at like an indie theater. But to make a long story short, I absolutely loved it, and I think it is the scariest movie of 2024. And I know that everyone's saying that, but I want to explain why it is so effective and also why Long Legs maybe didn't live up to the hype as much as Oddity did. I'm going to do full spoilers in this and I'm going to do a little plot synopsis before I say my stuff. So if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, probably don't watch this video. If you just want to hear about what actually happens, then I'm going to say what actually happens first. This movie starts out with a scene of a woman and it's, I'm going to get into why it's so fucking effective, but there's a scene of a woman in a house that she's renovating. She goes out to her car and when she comes back into the house, someone actually followed her in, but she doesn't see that and we don't see that, right? And then there's a, I want to say he's homeless because that's kind of what it inferred, but I don't totally know. He's a released mental patient of this woman's husband, who is a psychiatric doctor at a mental hospital slash prison. And he starts talking to this woman through the, it's almost like one of those things where you can talk to someone through the door. They're talking through this hole in the wall and he basically says, someone followed you into you your house and you need to get this guy out of your house. Like, I feel like you're in danger. But because he is a mental patient, he sounds extremely unreliable and you don't know what to do. And it puts you in the position of this woman. Do you let this mental patient in? Who's honestly, he's really fucking creepy. Do you let him in? Or do you not let him in and think that he's making shit up to try and get in? So spoiler alert, she ends up getting unalived by the guy who came into the house when she had the door open. And the mental patient guy was genuinely just trying to help her. But that's not what you think. You literally think that he's lying. So another spoiler alert, it's the woman's husband who told the killer to go and unalive his wife because he's having an affair with somebody that he met at this mental hospital where he works. So this whole thing is a setup and this husband slash doctor is going to get away with it until the, the woman who gets unalived, her twin sister figures the entire thing out just by using her like metaphysical properties because she's a psychic. So it does sound a bit convoluted and there's so much that I missed, but that's basically the gist of it. So it's like a murder mystery crime thriller with heavy psychic and heavy paranormal influences. There's a lot of like ghost imagery. There's a lot of like weird creature imagery. And weirdly, there is basically no gore. Like there's blood, obviously, and attacking scenes that are extremely effective, but there is basically no gore, which is totally unlike me to say that a movie with no gore basically and built around ghosts is going to be the scariest movie of the year for me. I'm kind of putting my pride aside on that one because I genuinely don't think that ghosts are scary usually and I don't really like things that don't go all the way with the gore because I feel like it's a Five Nights at Freddy's situation where I just wish it went farther. A lot of the time with horror movies, they really don't scare us because we are so spoiled in our movie choices that it feels like we know everything that's ever going to happen in any scary movie ever. And so we know exactly what the characters are going to be put in the situation and we're being skeptics of the movie before it even gets a chance. And honestly, it's really hard to scare people and audiences now are way too fucking smart. So when I went into this movie, I was thinking it was going to be scary because it's IFC and Shudder. Like um, they've done The Clove Hitch Killer, Humane, In a Violent Nature, Swallow, Maniac, which is like a so twisted and like fucking weird movie. Also, We Need to Do Something that's recently released by IFC. I think that's Shudder too. But anyway, IFC has a really great record of having weird, scary movies that are actually unsettling. So long story short, I think IFC is a fantastic horror studio. And whenever I also see Shudder is involved, I can't guarantee that it's gonna be good, but I can guarantee they're never going to skimp on violence, which I don't like it when horror movies don't do full violence because 
if it's going to go that way, I would much rather it actually go that way. Every Blumhouse movie ever does that, where like they shy away from violence. Like that's not the entire point of the movie. It just, if you're not, don't want violence, you can do something like psychological thriller or you can do something like that. You don't have to make a horror movie with creatures in it if you're not gonna show violence, it just doesn't make any sense. The first reason why this movie is scary and catches you off guard is I like to think of it as like boiling a frog in water. You're watching this movie and you go into it and it seems pretty familiar and not predictable, especially, especially from the beginning it's not predictable, but it is really familiar. They do not pretend to reinvent this paranormal murder mystery genre in any way. So you go into it and you're kind of fully eyes open and then all of a sudden it's very terrifying and you were so locked in because you were felt so safe in it that you end up being really scared. Whereas when you watch Midsommar, you feel from like the first few minutes of the movie that it's going to be extremely disturbing. This movie, you immediately feel like you've seen it before, so you're not scared of it. So that's the thing, it puts you in this position where you're immediately fully open to the experience because you think it's just a regular horror movie that's not gonna scare you, which I did. I was like watching it, I'm like, okay, this is just gonna be like, another Shutter original and then it was I was so pleasantly surprised like you have this creepy psychic sister who has a vintage kind of antique store and you're like oh I've seen this before you know and then the sound design creeps in and the really weird creature imagery of these vintage dolls and shit creeps in and you think oh this is gonna be have a little bit more kick than I thought it was gonna have it definitely broke the fourth wall in that way where it was so self-aware of when it was coming out as a movie that it was way more effective than a movie that pretends that it's not coming out in the era of horror movies where we've watched every single horror movie before. Jumping off of that point, the second reason that this is effective is terrifying and uncanny creature design. So we've seen a lot of creatures. We've seen a purge mask, dolls being worn as a mask. We've seen so many things that it's honestly hard to break through and make it memorable. What Oddity did was create creatures that were built off of things that were already made. So it basically took like the overdone white mask that we've seen a million times before and they put these two little holes that were so creepy and it was like actually really unsettling and the way that the violence went in that scene with that mask was so quick and really strange and it was really effective in being scary. The star of the show is this wooden creature that sits basically in the living room of these people's house the entire time and that's another thing about this movie is it puts you in this really weird position where you have to kind of deal with this creature just sitting in the living room that isn't really alive, but it feels alive because it's so huge and it's really creepy. This character design was so effective that even after looking at it the entire movie and it moves a little and it will move places, you still are not suffering from the too much monster effect. Where Long Legs, I feel like the design of Nicolas Cage's character, you were immediately used to it after seeing him twice. Whereas this creature that's basically just a statue is so scary to look at and so weird that you do not ever get tired of looking at it. And that is seriously one of the hardest things to do in creature design. There are very few creatures that give me this feeling where I'm genuinely really scared. If I would see that in real life, I'd be very scared. And this is one of those things, like the way that it moves in the movie and the way that it just sits there is really weird. Um, I might put up a few pictures of other creatures that kind of freak me out. And maybe this is just personal opinion, but I am way more terrified by human-like uncanny creatures than I am of like anything else that is really popular to use. Like little girls, for example, are not scary to me. I just am so tired of that trope. The monster has been for so long just like a little girl doll or a little girl being creepy or a kid being creepy and honestly like I'm tired of it. I want to see an uncanny creature and I really did get that with Oddity like it was so incredibly done. Genuinely the only other movie that's had creature design to scare me in the past 
few years was Caveat, which I think had a very similar design to one of the antiques in Oddity, but this rabbit design is so weird and creepy and it had the same thing with Oddity where the environment was familiar, but they pushed it to a level where you were uncomfortable even though you feel like you've been there a million times before watching a horror movie. Another reason why this is an extremely effective and scary movie is it inserts a skeptic, not only once, but twice. The skeptic in my opinion, is an unofficial horror movie trope where you have a character who genuinely is the voice of reason, the voice of reality, and who isn't under the plot armor of the horror movie and is scared or is saying the things that the audience is thinking or is basically the person that the audience member is. They're asking questions, they're trying to debunk stuff, and this is a really hard thing to write because it can destroy all of the momentum in your movie. But with this movie, not only was the doctor, like the mental hospital doctor who killed his wife, not only was he the skeptic because he was like all rational person, you know, but his person he's having an affair with, who has to be in that house with that creepy ass doll, is an extreme skeptic and she's being very blunt, she's being very- it's not really rude to me because she's just telling the truth, but she is literally the audience member in person at the house and she's doing brave things because she doesn't believe in anything and to do that and to still be scary is something that I actually haven't seen done in so fucking long. So putting two skeptics in the mix makes the movie not take itself too seriously which I think Long Legs did fall victim to. And when a movie takes itself too seriously and doesn't really insert a skeptic, especially a horror movie, it takes the fear away a little bit because it seems like it's in such a distant universe than ours that it's not grounded. And when it's grounded, I'm scared. I kind of related to the rude girl, like I would be doing the things that she's doing. She's like fucking with the doll. She's like looking at it, poking it and shit. I'm terrified. Even though I would be the skeptic in that situation, I'm genuinely terrified up for her. And the last reason why this movie is very creepy and will affect you is the jump scares. They're original because you're not expecting them from a movie like this, specifically like a really psychological heady horror thriller. You're not really expecting those almost cheap jump scares that you usually get in like every other horror movie. And that's all I really have to say about that. Like the jump scares are fantastic and it's literally they feel out of place in the best way and I genuinely screamed like four times because I really hated the monsters and they were really scary to me the way that they were slowly coming to life through this like paranormal activity thing I just really hated and on the topic of not taking itself too seriously this movie has a silly ending and it just really is fun to watch because you're scared of the jump scares it feels original and I literally for the first time in what seems like forever I have no complaints about any of the creature slash villain design which for me is something that I genuinely am so elated to feel. I've never felt like this in a really long time where I was like wow scary creature. I It was also moving really really weird and creepy and there was a point where the wooden doll comes alive and the sound design, I don't know if it was just because I was in the theater, but the sound design was so creepy to me that I genuinely wanted it to stop. Like I was really, really overwhelmed with it and I there was like these screaming things that were really, really intense and honestly hard to listen to. Basically imagine a movie with a silly group of characters, but an extremely creepy character design, a sound design that is so full of despair and horror that it doesn't even really match the rest of the movie, and it works so well, like it really does work. So when people say this movie is the scariest of 2024, they are telling you the truth, and it's not gonna like disturb you like a Gaspar No movie will, and it's not gonna make you like think about it forever, but if you want to be creeped out and you want to actually feel a little bit scared when you're watching a horror movie, seriously give it a quick chance. I really hope we get more horror movies like this. I'm super excited to see what's coming next and I'm elated to be living in the same timeline that 
all these movies are coming out. So thank you for clicking on my review. If you watch my all the way to the end, that's very, very nice of you. And I hope that I added a little bit of something to your experience if you watched it and you wanted to know if someone agreed with you.